In this video, I will explain how to use the Lagrange polynomial interpolation method. So let's jump right into an example. This says, use the Lagrange polynomial interpolation method to find an interpolating polynomial for the data points 0, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 4. So here's the idea. We're given three data points, or three xy coordinates, and we want to find the formula for a polynomial that will go through each of these three data points. So one way to do that is by using the Lagrange polynomial interpolation method. And here's how this method works. We say that the polynomial of x, and we say p sub 2. So this 2 is 1 less than the number of data points that we're given. So we say that the formula for this polynomial is equal to, if we want, we can label each of these points as x1, y1, x2, y2, and x3, y3. Here's the formula that we can use to find the polynomial that goes through these points. We say y1, so the very first y value, multiplied by, we take x minus, so in this case, the x value that corresponds to y1 is x1. So what we're going to do up here in the numerator is we're going to subtract all of the x values that are not x1. So for example, we'll subtract x2, and then we'll multiply that by x minus x3. So it's worth noting that this x, these x's right here, these are just variables. So don't get these confused with actual data points. So that's what we use for the formula in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we're going to take the x value that corresponds to this y1 value. So that would be x1. And we're going to subtract all of the other x values. So we'll say x1 minus x2 multiplied by x1 minus x3. Then we're going to add, so the next y value, so we started with y1, now we're moving on to y2 multiplied by, and we're going to repeat this same pattern. So the x value that corresponds to this y2 would be x2. So we're going to use this pattern again where we say x minus, and we're going to subtract all of the x values that are not x2. So we'll say x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x3. Then in the denominator, we do the same pattern that we did here, where we take the x value that corresponds to y2, so x2, and we subtract all of the other x values. So x2 minus x1 multiplied by x2 minus x3. And we just keep repeating this pattern over and over again for each of the xy coordinates. So we can see we only have one more y value to work with, that's y3. So let's add that to the mix as well, so plus y3 multiplied by, now we use the same technique, so the x value that corresponds to y3 would be x3, so we're going to say x minus all of the other x values that are not x3. So x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2. Then in the denominator, we take the x value that corresponds to this y3 value, so again that's x3, and we subtract all of the other x values. So x3 minus x1 times x3 minus x2. So for our example, this is the entire formula that we're going to use. All we have to do now is just plug in all of the values for the y's and the x's. So when we do that, here's what we get. Okay, so we just went ahead and filled in all of the x and y values. Now if we simplify, here's what we get. So here's what we get, and then if we simplify a little bit further, here's what we get. So here's what we get, and then if we combine like terms, here's what our final answer turns out to be. So our final polynomial turns out to be 1 half x squared minus 1 half x plus 1. This is the polynomial that goes through each of these three original data points that we were given. Now a very easy way to check that we got the right answer is just pick any of these original x values into this polynomial and see if you get the corresponding y value. So for example, if we plug in a 3 for x, we should get a 4 as the output of this function. So let's check if we do. So I'm going to make a little bit of room right here. So again, here's the polynomial that we found. If we plug in a 3 into this polynomial for x, we should get 4 as the output. So if we plug in a 3, we'll say p sub 2 of 3. If we plug in a 3, we get 1 half times 3 squared minus 1 half times 3 plus 1. So 3 squared is 9. So here we get 9 times 1 half, or 9 halves, minus 1 half times 3, that's 3 halves plus 1. So 9 halves minus 3 halves, that's 6 halves, plus 1. 6 halves, that's the same as 3, so we get 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. So indeed, when we plug in a 3 for x, we do get a 4 as the output of the function. And one other way that you might use this polynomial function is by plugging in a new x value and estimating what the corresponding y value would be. So for example, let's say we plugged in a 4 for x. 
what does this polynomial estimate that the corresponding y value would be? Well, let's find out. So if we plug in a 4, so p sub 2 of 4, we would get 1 half times 4 squared minus 1 half times 4 plus 1. So we would get 4 squared, that's 16. So 16 times 1 half is 8 minus 1 half of 4 is 2 plus 1. So we get 8 minus 2, that's 6, plus 1 is 7. So in other words, our polynomial function says that when we plug in an x value of 4, we estimate that the y value would be 7. So that is the general idea of how you can use the Lagrange polynomial interpolation method.